Good day viewers, well time to get this uh, meter here tested. Couple more in there, I've got another one of those in there I think. Yeah, I've got to save the CT ones to last, so I'll um, make a bit of a thin out in the container I think. I've uh, got some stuff like high bay lights, so I'll probably keep one or two of those. And some of the really big ones, which I've got too bloody many of, I'll uh, sell them off. I only like the street lights the best, so I keep room for um, stuff like TVs and more meters. But yeah, I've got to dig up the current chance one was again and rig those up somehow at some stage and leave those on here. And I could use them for the CT meters, it just makes it so much easier. So at the moment, I'm just still saving the test and those will last. It's just too much of a pain in the ass without them. Anyway, let's uh, get this meter tested. Type SD, three phase, 133 per 3 so kilo whatever, 3 times 10 amps, 40 amp maximum, 3 times 240, 450 volt, 50 cycles, 4 wire. Bit of a glare on these things, but anyway, you should be able to see it. It's going to get in the right spot for you. And then on zero. Oh, bit of inrush there. Yeah, very, very good team. Look how bouncy that is. That's a bouncy meter. Look how bouncy that meter is. You be able to see it drop as these wires head up too. So it's on this first dot. Keep an eye on that in the first dot. We've got, let's see, we've got 50,102. 50,102 kilowatt hours on this meter. My own 84 recalibrated. Yeah, it's a 19 mid 70s, this one. Top of a nameplate in those magnets. Those magnets just look better. Just looks better with big ring shaped horseshoe brake magnets. I love the shape of those. They just give the meter character. Even the little BAZ too. <laughs> You can see this little meter fluctuate here. The magnetic just bounces. It's actually dropping, dropped a little bit in current because these wires heat up. This uh, car wire here, 12 volt heavy amp gauge wire, is a bit um, on the low voltage side for the insulation wire, so be careful that doesn't knock through and short. I don't have any more of this uh, mains rated stuff. Gotta keep my eye, keep an eye on it for more of that. You can see how current fluctuates. It's about 35 amps there. That meter works quite well for something like that water in it and rust it a little bit. I saved it just in time. Because up in the mountains where they lived, it was just always the clouds are the right in the bloody clouds. A high area. And it was always, um, always every night, it's always moist and dewy because of the, how high the altitude was. Always wet. But lucky I saved it before any more damage got done to that meter. Because I uh, did it all there but then pressure washed it there on site before I let it dry out and packed it away in my luggage. So lucky I stopped it getting any worse. The rust. Ah, oh, seam brand, Taiwan meter. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make a backdrop. Get this glare eliminated. It's my next project, I think. Get a backdrop made up. Some sort of curtain or something I can put here. Yeah, it's constant 35 amps and steady now. Pretty good. Gonna make up some sort of terminal cover for that now. Might be able to make something up. Oops, that bloody fan.
look carefully, there's a tiny bit of fluctuation in that meter. Which is all uh, an energy rate, energy saving. I'm not really pulling that much off the grid. So, phantom loading saves a lot of energy. So, I get a good enough uh, proper, I mean, a proper pure sine wave inverter. And then um, get a big battery back and solar panels. I mean, want to do this completely off the grid. Even if the power goes off, I can still do these sorts of uh, metering videos. Yeah, you got to be careful what inverters you buy, because some Chinese ones say they're pure sine wave and they're not. And they're thinking, there's all sorts of noise and shit getting in the way. You can easily tell if we plug in an old valve radio or something into them. That would be the easiest way to check. But do be careful, because some inverters are, um, are square waves, so be very careful what you buy. Uh, I've, uh, that's why I've been, I've been reluctant to buy a bloody inverter lately. Better off with a, a decent UPS. A UPS is the only thing that puts it at best, a guaranteed good sine wave, pure sine wave that is. You know, these Chinese inverters are just, you know, they do too much more damage than good. To I could find a good enough brand at a good price, at least 2 kilowatt rated, that actually does put out a good pure sine wave. Yeah, I'll wait till I get one of those. Coming off the top here, get this nice and close. Give a close look at everything here. Almost there. That's almost there too. Spot on. It's not causing any uh, issues of the accuracy between the meters. This uh, extra bit of load I got in here. <laughs> you see the maker? Ta Sing. YL70 brand. There's its company logo. Car Sing. Yeah, it's quite a vintage one, that one. It's not a modern one. One more. Yep, pretty good. I would say there, yeah. The say was getting the clamp made of it all the time. He's brilliant. We're almost there, one more hundredth of a kilowatt hour, and it has to be done. He's wired up like he's in this uh, car. These are different colour of these are all mains rated wiring except for this car one. It causes a little bit of an issue with the uh, resistance and causes it to go slightly out of accuracy, only a little bit there. Spot on. Pretty good. That's a bouncy meter. <laughs> Unplug safety first. Zero it off. Let's get this thing cleaned up. Still bouncing. <laughs> Well, okay, all nice and cleaned up. A bit of cloth tape speed under here. It's gotten stuck on there pretty hard. And here we are. <laughs> Found a towel and a couple of four from the last metering score. A bit newer, this one. Bit of fits. I've got plenty of these. It's off one of those new electronic meters, this car cover. There we are, perfect. Clean up quite well. Thanks for watching.